Hello viewers, this is Just Fake Network TV, a place where you can get the latest information about Nigeria news and now the news in details. Good night from Asu Rock, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. If you are looking for where to read newspapers in Asu Rock, visit the Vice President's office, noted a social media user. The pendulum is already swinging and the scales of the Kaaba is dangling towards a certain direction. The battle for the souls of 2023 is gradually being drawn. The coast is becoming clearer. The battle is all about who, kept, who gets the top job in 2023. Needless says, it's going to be a fight to finish. It's going to be a war between the pigs and the cabars. Should I increase the volume for the Honorable Minister for Power to hear me? Who will get dirtier and happier this time around, the pigs or the cabars? It is indeed a battle between the monstrous, ferocious and powerful northern covers and the Jagabans boys. Sorry, I meant to say the Yoruba of the southwest, intriguing days, ha ha head. Time and events will keep on unfolding how those people tussle with twist, hit and break necks. Now look at it this way. They started the ruthless experimentation with the Sahara Reporters Publishers, Mr. Shuwere when the Northern Oligans decided to hood him. They definitely had something in mind. They wanted to know how the Southwest would react, as if the well-orchestrated plans were lying like landmines. The Yoruba political gladiators are already playing into the traps. The hell kept mute at Shawere's gut wrenchy invasion and arrest. Some of them even encouraged the president and his powerful cabras to keep Shuwere as long as he wishes, in as much as 2023 would not be compromised with other ethnic groups. They would record that pressures were all around the Ashiwaju of Yoruba land and self start a world war of our time, Ashiwaju Bola Tinubu to run for 2023 presidency. Anyway, that is what he told us. Shuwere has always been seen as a threat to the political interest of Jagabon. No, he was a big threat to the collective interest of the southwest as such it has to be eliminated from the picture having seen that the cheese that the chess was really playing out as planned it is now time to touch one of the untouchables the most powerful political office holder from the southwest was striped off his power and rendered almost redundant this was a clear message to the jagabon that it was no longer business as usual Nobody dares the cabras and tell the story with joy. First, Mr. President, I meant the unseen hand in the presidency. Disbanded the Oshibaju-led economic management team, even without giving him prior notice. He took the vice president by surprise. I supposed he would still be nursing the wound and trying to recover from the rude shock by now. But the cabras would not stop there. They needed to leave the Jagabon with a bloody nose by hitting very hard at his men. It has to be caught to size by all means for nursing his inordinate ambition. Without mincing words, it has to be taught some lessons and be told to his BFX that he is still a political neophyte in the, mock, in the mocking waters of Nigeria's politics. Nigeria is neither legal state nor Southwest, where the Jagabans could loom large without restraint. Nigerian, as things are wrong, are now belongs to the Kabas and by extension the power Northern Holy Guard. Come to think of it, to be frank, many had seen the Oshibajo led he empty as an epoch making disaster, as some economics and financial analysts would argue. The vice president headed the most inept ruderless and historically failed economic team in the history of Nigeria, a sort of Buhari's Sibajan political economy. Certainly, the economic team will be remembered for its notoriety for plunging the economy into a state of comatose. Sadly, under its economic wash, millions of Nigerians fell into the Atlantic Ocean of abject poverty. Nigerians quickly leapt to become the poverty capital of the world. Although many still argue that the baton of responsibility rests between him and the Kabas as the president signed anything that comes to his desk. 
through the cabals without making any attempt to go through those documents. After all, the ones admitted he doesn't read through documents before signing and presenting them to the public. Secondly, right from the inception of the Buhari's administration, the vice president has been sharing the govern governing boards of the National Emergency Management Agency, Border Community Development Agency, the National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, and the National Boundary Commission. He likewise shared the board of directors of Niger Delta Power Holding Company, a limited liability company jointly owned by the three tiers of government as well as chairman of National Council on Privatization. Those are powerful portfolios being superintended by him. This gave him some sense of superiority over the demigod Kabas. But how far Oshibajo would go with those titles is a matter to be determined not by the constitutions or any other extant law, but by the godless Kabas whole feeding fats, both at Aso Rock and outside present of powers. They could even call the cannon shoot from the Aura Palace or Kaduna Government Ausa or Kaduna Government House or anywhere in the north. Aligning with its with their interests could have saved the vice president all this embarrassment. Perhaps it has even come to his speculations that he is also nursing the ambition of giving the top job a shot. A, a shot should his boss fail to clinch the ticket. Now all those powers that had given him a false sense of confidence and smartness have been striped off with just the tip of the finger by the cabras. Is the game not over? What this means is that the vice president would just be there, isolated and abandoned. What gave him relevance has been taken away. Third, before, before he could take any decisions or actions now, approval must first be sought and obtained by him from the almighty cabras. It will get to their tables first. They will have to query it, ask both reasonable and unreasonable questions. Approval would be timelessly delayed. Frustrations would creep in. The office would become more rebound and redundant. It will be starved of funds. Apologies to the Kogi state governor and his estranged deputy. Fraud, that notorious trader money and what have you would also have to go. No more traveling allowances. The vice president would just come to office, press and charge his phone, tweet, Facebook, WhatsApp, and perhaps listen to news and retire back home. This may soon be his routine for the next four years. The powerful Kabas is at work. A time is coming when Nigerians will be asking themselves whether the office of the vice president still exists. That is what the Kabas can do. Challenge them and your story would be told with deterrence and as a warning to others. Fifth, major national dailies are recently reporting how the vice president eight were packing out of House Rock in droves. The tyrant was becoming unbecoming for them. The manifestations of the power of the Kabras, unbearable as a rock. Now what becomes of Tinubu and his ambition if the Kabras decides to go after all his men on key political positions at the federal level? They are digging the trenches against 2023 for the Jagaban and his men. Will he survive the onslaught? Time will tell. For now, the coup from the Kabaz is already given some ambitious gladiators sleepless night. Is impeachment possible? Pretty much. But what that would be too lousy and unnecessarily pronounced? With a subtle, with a subtle, but dangerous steps being taken by the Kabaz, I see darkness hovering around the Jagaban's ambition. The sinister is already gathering to perch. On the Zuma Rock, will the Southwest pick up now? Or would they also sacrifice Oshibajo with the hope that 2023 is still much feasible for them? The question I am compelled to ask is how would the Southwest appeal the South, the Aso Rock, without sacrificing their 2023 inordinate ambition? So, guys, what is your own take? What do you think? And what I can say about this is that definitely Nigerian politics does not make sense at all. I'm telling you about, I'm telling you the truth. It is all about acquiring power without using it to make any impact on the citizens. Nigerian politicians 
they are selfish set of people. Despite that, the northern, that they are not occupying all the important posts in all the ministries and other institutions. Just tell me how it has been benefited. How it has benefited us. In any way. And we can, we can definitely say that their government does not even benefit us at all. At the moment, the Arewa are crying the loudest that Buhari government is a failure. You can imagine. It is a failure. That's with the look of things, with the things that are going on in the country right now. But definitely, the only thing that I know, sure, is that Tinubu can never be president of this country. Because he is one of the people that are destroying our country, Nigeria. Since he wants to trade on the tone of Southeast, what happened to Hawala Waden? And Abiola will be a child play to what will happen to him. And definitely, South East and South South will never vote for him. Even it's sixty-five percent of South West will not vote for him too. And this is going to be a payback time for his betrayer. That and that that is that that's the true, true fact about it. Because definitely it shows that uh, Tinubu has sold his soul to the northerners. But obviously regret is awaiting him. So my people, what do you think? What is your home take? Your comment is highly appreciated. And kindly drop your comment at the comment section. For those who subscribe, I want to say a very big thank you to you for subscribing. We say God bless you. If you're yet to do so, kindly press the subscription button below. And also please don't forget to press the notification button. So that whenever we upload news, you will always be the first person to watch our latest news. God bless you. Always stay safe. Bye.